Hey guys, welcome back to another F1 Fantasy video post-Hungary and pre-Spa. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over the main price changes, the teams you can select for Spa, what chips you could use as it's another sprint race weekend, what team I will use, my league, and much more. So before we get into it, make sure to like and subscribe, follow my Twitter, join my league, and join my Discord server. So let's get into it. So the price changes from Hungary to Spa are as followed. Perez moves up 1 million, Verstappen up 0.2 million, Red Bull up 0.2 million, Hamilton and Russell 0.3 million, Mercedes up 0.1 million, Ferrari also up 0.1 million, Aston Martin up 0.5 million, Alonso and Stroll up 0.5 million individually, Norris and Piastri both up 1 million, McLaren also up 1 million, Gasly and Ocon down 0.1 million, and Alpine itself as well 0.1 million down. And those are the main price movements, and I will be ranting here a little bit, so move on to the next part if you want to, but I don't get why there's so many price moves at the minute in F1 Fantasy. Yes, I get McLaren going up because now they're insanely good at the minute, but Red Bull and Mercedes have both gone up in price, and I don't see why. They've always been this good. So how comes they're getting like 0.1 mil or 0.5 mil or a million more every race weekend? Like, let me put this into example. I know FPL is very different to F1 Fantasy, but good teams by the end of the season potentially will have 107, 108 million max in FPL. And just for a regular team like mine, I missed out on the Norris move I will be talking about later in this video. But for a normal team, say if you started at the first Grand Prix and didn't do any proper screw ups, you'll have around 110 million already. And it's like the only teams that should be moving up and down in price at the minute are potentially Ferrari and the Ferrari boys because they're doing a lot worse at the minute. McLaren should be moving up and technically Aston Martin shouldn't be moving at all but they're still getting more points than a team around that price value would get you. So they should still be moving up as well. But Mercedes, Red Bull should not be moving up. There is no reason to. Mercedes are already too overpriced. So why, why, and Red Bull, everyone's already got Red Bull. So why the, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. Put down in the comments also, if some of the price movements don't make sense to you as well. Like also for instance, Alpine only went down 0.1 million this weekend even though they literally had the most disastrous race weekend and yes because it was a crash they don't really deserve to go down by that much but they have been underperforming quite a lot recently so how can Gasly and Ocon still be around the same price to Stroll and Piastri it just doesn't make sense but anyway let's move on to the chips that you can use for Spa now for me like in austria it's another sprint race weekend yes you can save your chips for when someone has a penalty but for me i like using them on the limitless races there's just more points up for grabs so the extra drs and limitless will get you more points than your normal team would have so obviously for me i've already used limitless so i'll be using extra drs this weekend and it'll be going on verstappen of course and then your two times drs has to go on either norris if you've got him or Perez. And now the teams I would use if you are using the Limitless chip this weekend are as followed. So the first team would be Verstappen, Perez, Russell, Norris, Hamilton, McLaren and Red Bull. Of course McLaren are in a great run of form at the minute. I didn't realise how well they're doing Hungary. So if they did well in Hungary they for sure will be doing well at Spa which is much more like the British Grand Prix compared to the racing style of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Now, Mercedes or McLaren, they've been pretty close. Which one will do better? For me, it's still McLaren, so I'd go for McLaren. But basically, I have four teams you could pick. And basically, it's taking out Russell, putting in Piastri, keeping McLaren. Or it's the same two choices I've just said there and getting rid of the McLaren and putting in the Mercedes and the Constructors instead. And both teams will get you a great amount of points. So, moving on to the teams you can use for Spa, in my opinion... And for this race weekend, I've actually got nine teams you can use. Now, again, there's variations depending on how much money you have, but I've made nine teams 
within the team valuation of 117 million to the standard 100 million. And yes, you heard me right, 117 million, because technically if you'd made the right transfers, you could have up to that transfer value. And I can guarantee some people at the top will have that. So to start off, I'll start off with the higher team, 117.1 million you'll need for this team. And it is the following. Verstappen, Perez, Norris, Piastri, Joe, Red Bull and McLaren. Now, obviously I've spoken about McLaren. They got 62 points in Hungary. They did amazing. Same with Red Bull. You need Red Bull in your team. 95 points in Hungary. They were the top two constructors for F1 Fantasy last race weekend. And they will be it probably next weekend as well. And now for Perez, yes, he has bad qualifying, but he still gets you 39 points like he got in Hungary because he'll get so many overtakes and potentially when he's even further down, he might get driver of the day. And then Piastri, I chose because Hungary, he got 18 points. In Silverstone, he got 20 points. He's been on a roll just like Norris. You need the McLaren boys. They're so cheap and so effective at the minute. Norris also got 29 points in Hungary. So without a doubt, F1 Fantasy has changed from the Red Bull and the Aston Martin boys with Red Bull and Aston Martin as a constructor to Red Bull and the McLaren boys with McLaren as a constructor. But funnily enough, team two is the exact same team just with Hulkenberg. Now, of course, from 117.1 million to 115.7 million, which is the gap, you can put in Ricardo, Sonoda, Sargent, any choice you want, whatever your team value is. The team I would choose for around 114.5 million would be Verstappen, Russell, Norris, Piastri, Hulkenberg, Red Bull and McLaren. Now, this is because to have a team with Perez and both McLaren boys is extremely difficult at the minute. So if you just can't afford it and you feel like Norris is gonna have another good weekend and you think actually it's worthwhile to bring in both McLaren boys instead of Perez and bring in someone still who's gonna get you quite a lot of points in Russell, then go for it. I think that's a great team. I wish I could get that team, but sadly I need a mil or so more. But for around 114.5 million, that is definitely the best team. Russell is a big yes. Yes, he had an outlier this weekend because of all the race overtakes he got. But in the same machinery as Hamilton, we've seen he can keep up with him. So he will be getting you a top six or a top seven finish, which is good enough to reduce from Perez. Now for the team worth 112.9 million, and it is as followed. Verstappen, Sainz, Norris, Piastri, Hulkenberg, Red Bull and McLaren. So obviously then we drop further down for Perez dropping to Sainz. And again, that's just to make sure you have both McLaren boys because they're going up in price. They are worth it at the minute. McLaren isn't slowing down. Will they get their first race win of the season in Spa? Who knows, but you gotta have them in your team. And again, for Hulkenberg, that's just to reduce costs. Of course, if you have more money to play around with, replace them again, like I always say with Joe, Sonoda, Sargent or Ricardo. But if you don't, Hulkenberg is still good enough to get you like zero to five points. But realistically, all of those drivers will make up for it. Now onto the teams around 111 million and 112 million. And this is my team at the minute, which is valued at 112.3 million. Uh, my team is actually valued at 113.5, but this is the best team realistically I can get. And funnily enough, it brings back Stroll. It's Verstappen, Perez, Stroll, Joe, Piastri, Red Bull and McLaren. Yet yeah, basically it's reducing Norris to Stroll, keeping Piastri and obviously McLaren as a constructor. And Joe, he's the best out of the fifth driver pick for me. Stroll is not that good. He got you nine points last weekend. But funnily enough, because of how bad the Aston Martin is at the minute, Stroll's getting you more points than Alonso in Hungary, purely because Stroll will get a few more overtakes than Alonso, and Alonso will tend to drop down more. So funnily enough, it actually might be better to have Stroll now after all, after all I've said about him. But then going down to a team around 109.2 million would be Verstappen, Perez, Piastri, Albon and Hulkenberg. And basically this team is just downgrading from Stroll to Albon, saving yourself 1.7 million if you just don't have the funds to bring in Stroll. And my God, basically if you had Red Bull McLaren, a McLaren driver, and both Red Bull drivers, it's a great core foundation to build around. And no matter what, you'll still get a lot of points compared to your competitors if you are around that team value. Of course, it's not going to get you the most points, but like I said, it'll get you more than the people around you. That is the best team for around 109 million pounds. Now, for a team worth 106.3 million pounds, the best I could think of would be Verstappen, Perez, Piastri, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, Red Bull, and McLaren. So again, like I said, it's built upon that foundation of Verstappen, Perez, Piastri, just because he's cheaper, 
and Red Bull and McLaren. And then the other two drivers, of course, they will get you pretty poor results, but it's better than having a Stroll. It's better than having a Gasly. It's better than having an Ocon. In some cases, it might actually be better than having an Albon. So we'll see how that works. But for a team valued at 106.3 million, that is a bargain of a team if you don't have a lot of money to play around with. So that gets my stamp of approval. That is one of my favorite teams for that price value. And then the second final team valued at 103.5 million would be Verstappen, Norris, Piastri, Ricardo, Albon, Red Bull and McLaren. And for this team, you drop Perez out just to bring in more funds, around 7 million less for Norris, meaning you can actually improve to Albon and Ricardo instead of Ricardo and Hulkenberg. You obviously keep Red Bull and McLaren, the core of Verstappen, Piastri, and yes, you do get rid of that core of Perez, but with how Norris is doing at the minute, Norris will get you just as many points, so there's nothing to fret about that team. And again, for 103.5 million, you have to get creative with these low-costing teams. And I really like that team if you are struggling or new to F1 Fantasy. And now, finally, for what you've all been waiting for, the 100 million team, which is technically 99.9 .9 million, which I think is the greatest team to start off your F1 Fantasy if you have just started, which would be Verstappen, Norris, Piastri, Ricardo, Joe, Red Bull and McLaren. Now, of course, if you could tell, you're just replacing Albon with Joe. And if you needed a bit more money because you've had a terrible, terrible start to the season, of course, you can drop back down to the likes of Ricardo, Sargent or Hulkenberg. And I think that about wraps up all the teams you could use for Spa. Comment down below which is your favourite. Comment down below if you'll be using a different team. But I think I've done a pretty good job showing how many teams you can make from each price range. Everyone at the minute has different team values. So of course, if I just put out a video saying this is the best team to use, the people who aren't doing as well or don't have as much money as they can use, then you can't really help them out. And as you can see, it was a weekend to forget for me. I really got in my head doing the final fix and... I saw the opportunity to go for Zhou, thinking he qualified fifth, he can at least finish in the top 10. But no, he has a first lap collision and well, it was over from there and I got minus 10 points for him. And it was sad because the rest of my team did pretty good. But as I've shown, my team has completely changed for next weekend. And no word of a lie, Vassier got a call from him and he wanted me for a Ferrari strategic job after seeing my strategic masterclass with the final fix. I don't know what to say, it's just the Ferrari way. But, all jokes aside, let's go have a look at my league and let's shout out the top five. So, of course, like always, link in the description. I'll show the link right now as well with the code. Thank you all so much for joining my league. We've got 99 teams in there at the minute. We just need one more to hit that 100 landmark as a channel. And I'd be so grateful to hit 100 of you in my league. It's just such a great achievement for me. I can't thank you guys enough. And not only that. But this league is so competitive as well. Like the top five who I will shout out and even the top 10. I asked last weekend how well you guys did. And some of your global rankings were insane. So I'm really happy with it. It keeps me on my toes, you know. It's good to see how good you can really do in F1 Fantasy. But anyway, here's the top five shout out. We've got Cali Team 3, Gogo Tron, Rivaldi HV F1 Team, Ferrari Nice, and Fast and Furious 101. Well done to all of you, and I hope you have good luck for the rest of the season. And I think that about wraps up this video. Comment down below if you think I've missed anything for Spa that is crucial. And hey, I'll see you all later on in this week. Bye-bye.